uh, the member for Scarborough. Mr Deputy Speaker, I first would like to congratulate the Honourable Michelle Roberts on her appointment to the role of Speaker. It is an honour to have been in the chamber to witness the historic moment of the state's first female Speaker being elected, and I wish her all the best in the role going forward. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. I would also like to acknowledge the former member for Scarborough, Lisa Harvey, and thank her for her 12 years of service to our community. I'm beyond grateful to the people of the Scarborough electorate for placing their trust in me to be the Member of Parliament that works hard to represent their interests in this place. Scarborough is my home. It has been for near on a decade. I will raise my kids here one day, and I expect it will be my forever home. Scarborough is its own little bubble in our city, close to the CBD for work, with the state's best beaches on our doorstep. There is no better place to watch the sunset over the Indian Ocean than Sunset Hill on Scarborough foreshore. Scarborough truly is a special place and in this I am completely unbiased. There is so much it has to offer. These are just some of the things that make it special to me. Going for a run around Lake Gwellup, catching a wave at Trigg Beach, snorkelling at Medham's Pool in North Beach, enjoying both the view of the city and the ocean from Doubleview Hill, shopping at Carinup, patrolling Scarborough's long white sandy beaches and crystal blue waters as a surf lifesaver, and what could potentially be the electorate's jewel in the crown, the Ikea at Inaloo. <laughs> I have a strong connection to my home, and I will never be prouder than when I was standing out on the balcony of my club, Scarborough Surf Life Saving Club, on election night, and learned that I had been elected as the member that represents this beautiful and unique part of the world. I just want to take a moment to say to everyone in Parliament, if there is ever a moment when you're wondering why there's suddenly so much beat sand around, I apologise in advance. <laughs> Second only to its natural beauty is the community of Scarborough, people from all walks of life who are drawn to its beauty and laid-back lifestyle. It is a strong local vibe, and our community welcomes anyone who wants to enjoy what Scarborough has to offer. Scarborough is home to much of the untouched natural beauty that makes WA one of the best places in the world. There is a strong desire in the Scarborough community to preserve this natural beauty and way of life, but also see Scarborough reach its potential and welcome anyone who wants to share in what Scarborough has to offer. I share this desire and I look forward to working hard with the community in finding a way forward that finds a balance that everyone can be at peace with. The backbone of Scarborough's community is its schools, community groups and sporting clubs. I would like to take a moment to welcome two honoured guests who are here today, school captains of Scarborough Primary School, Toloa Madden and Maya Westaway. I was extremely honoured by how Toloa and Maya so graciously welcomed me to their school's ANZAC service and I wanted to repay that honour. Scarborough Primary School's motto is to strive. Being leaders of your school is no small feat, and I commend your courage in stepping up, and I am sure you'll be future leaders of the Scarborough community. Scarborough Primary School is the third smallest school in WA by land size, and while it might be small in size, it is big in heart. It plays a large role in strengthening our community, as do all of our schools. I am proud to have been able to deliver, as part of this McGowan Labor government, a $7.9 million commitment to upgrade Scarborough Primary School to provide extra classrooms. This upgrade will accommodate the, number of, the growing number of students and give them back the play space currently being taken by transportable buildings. Being the third smallest in the state, this play space is vital in the children's physical and mental development. Physical activity and a sense of belonging to your community is incredibly important to the well-being of children and adults alike. I know this firsthand, how fulfilling it can be from being a member of Scarborough Surf Life Saving Club and protecting my community on the beach as a surf life saver. As Scarborough's new local member and an active community member, I aim to, to support all clubs to the best of my ability to increase participation and integration with the wider community and with each other. By supporting each other, we can be stronger together as a community. One of the threats that Scarborough faces as a coastal electorate is the rising sea levels resulting from climate change. It is with great pride that I stand here as part of a government that has been taking the threat of climate change seriously. With the appointment of the state's first ever ministers for climate action and hydrogen industry, I feel confident in our state's ability to create sustainable solutions as well as new local green jobs in hydrogen, carbon farming, green manufacturing and waste and recycling. I look forward to working as part of the McGowan Labor government to continue this effort to protect the future of our state and Scarborough from the threat of climate change. As the youngest member in this parliament, it is my generation that will have to face the harshest effects of climate change. 
Mr Deputy Speaker, diversity is strength, and it fills me with pride standing here looking out across my 52 Labor colleagues, especially with an almost 50 per cent representation of women. It is an encouraging sign that our parliament will lead the way forwards towards a fairer and more equal society for everyone, one that better reflects the West Australian community. With the retirement of fellow tradesmen McMurray and Fran Logan and taking up the mantle of the only tradesman in this parliament, I am eager to share my experiences as a tradie, a sparky, a FIFO worker, a surf lifesaver and the youngest member of this house. One, one question I so often get asked is what is someone like me doing in politics? The answer is too long to explain in a taxi, at the pub or on the door, so I will share it here today. When I sat at Cape Naturalist Lighthouse after completing a five-day hike of the Cape to Cape and received a phone call from Ellie Whitaker, Assistant State Secretary of the WA Labor Party, asking if I put my hand up for pre-selection for Scarborough, I was a little bit surprised myself. Once I had overcome the initial shock, I saw an opportunity to really step up for my community, and to me, that is everything. My whole life I have been guided by a quote by Albert Pine. What we do for ourselves in this life dies with us. What we do for others and the world remains and is immortal. I have always held the belief since a young age that my purpose in life should be to work for others, to lift up those around me, to serve my community, my state and my country. Now, I want you to imagine it is 45 degrees, 100% humidity, no cloud cover. You are surrounded by red dirt, loud machinery, and you are standing on top of a stacker. For those who don't know what a stacker is, it is a large machine that stands about 50 metres tall that stacks ore onto a stockpile before it is loaded onto the ships. I stood here at the age of 21, looking out over the Dampier Peninsula and the Indian Ocean thinking to myself, I'm absolutely miserable. I love my trade and I'm very good at it, but it is not my passion. I had a very long hard look at myself that day and I realised I was off course. I had lost my way. I was sacrificing my body and my mind in the pursuit of money, and for me it has never been about money. It has been about purpose and service. From that day, things changed. 21 turned out to be a big year for me. I completed my electrical apprenticeship and became a qualified Sparky. I began my first FIFO job. I moved out of home. I came out to my friends and family, and I joined the Australian Labor Party. My parents guided me through life and gave me the tools to succeed, but they never forced beliefs on me when it came to religion or politics. I joined the WA Labor Party because of my values, values that the Labor Party shares, values that my parents instilled in me to guide me through life to be a good person. Those values continue to guide me to this day. Compassion, fairness, equality, integrity, and a mission to work hard for the greater good of all. When I joined the Labor Party, I was looking for a way to fulfill that purpose, to find my way again. I vividly remember walking into my first branch meeting, lost and unsure. On that day, I met someone who confirmed everything that I was hoping for, and from there, I knew I belonged. He was the beacon that showed me I was on the right path, that the Labor Party is the party that works for a better future for all. That man, that beacon, is sitting in this house and has been for some time. That man is none other than Minister Templeman. I am grateful to Minister Templeman for being kind and genuine towards an impressionable young man who was finding his way in the world. I hope to live up to being the same calibre of local member as Minister Templeman, to be that beacon that shines bright to the people of Scarborough that shows that there is a better future for all under a Labor government. But I'll leave the singing to him. <laughs> After this meeting, I continued to transition towards politics, hitting the campaign trail, going back to school, getting into university, all the while continuing to work FIFO in the mining industry. Mining is ingrained in my family's history, as it is in our state's history. My grandfather on my mum's side, affectionately known as Gung Gung, was the first baby born at Black Ridge Mining Town. He was one of the first to work at Hammersley Iron's East Intercourse Island project before the township of Dampier was even founded. Over 50 years later, I would follow in his footsteps as I ventured up north in 2012 for my first mining role. I worked at East Intercourse Island as a fixed plant maintenance electrician. My grandfather on my dad's side, Walter, was a coal mine worker in Wales. And my father, when he immigrated to Australia, laid railway tracks in the Kimberley before he settled down as an educator to raise and support our family. I have no living memory of my grandfathers. They both died when I was very young. I am proud to have followed in their footsteps 
and knowing they were both staunch Labor supporters, I know they would be proud to see their grandson standing here as a Labor Member of Parliament. Times were incredibly tough for my grandparents and my parents in the mining industry. We have made considerable strides to improve the lives and conditions of the mining workforce, their families left at home and the mining communities. But we still have a way to go. Mental health is an issue that I continually face during my seven years in the mining industry, not just as a sparky, but as a supervisor, an EBA negotiator, an elected safety and health representative, and a mines rescue and emergency response team member. During each of these, I not only supported my colleagues in their struggle with mental health, but I also fought my own battles. As a result, I fought and succeeded in bringing about changes that improved lives and the lives and mental health of my colleagues and friends in a small way. Only those who have experienced working FIFO or have family that work FIFO can understand the conditions where we stand, the gruelling heat, the social isolation from friends and family, the long hours, long swings, shift work, high risk tasks and much more. We duked it out shift by shift, sacrificing our well-being in, in trying to build a better future for ourselves and our families. In these arduous times, we looked to each other for support and we lent on each other. The gleaming light that shone through it all is the camaraderie, the larrikinism, the strength and resilience to overcome great challenges through grit and hard work. The bonds we shared and the challenges we overcame speak to what it is to be Australian. I hope that during my time in this place, I can assist and... I've lost the page. Sorry. I'm proud to be standing here as part of the government that delivered the code of practice for mentally healthy workplaces for fly-in, fly-out workers in the resources and construction sectors. I was on the ground representing over 50 colleagues as a safety and health representative when the code was released. It acknowledged the issues and gave a clear framework for how to take practical steps to improve the mental health and culture in the mining workforce. I hope that during my time in this place, I can assist in furthering this work and increase the uptake of these measures across the industry to prevent any further suicides of any more of my friends and colleagues. I have big shoes to fill now being the only tradesman in this house, but as most tradies know, it's hard work that wins the day and I know I'm up to the task. Winning Scarborough at this election was no easy task. When I was first pre-selected as a candidate, I had the honour of having the Premier, walk out, uh, Premier out on a walk around Scarborough Foreshore an experience, to say the least. The Premier was rushed by adoring members of the public wanting selfies and to express their gratitude, cheered on by passing cars, and I was mistaken for both the contestant on The Bachelor and one of the Premier's bodyguards. <laughs> In a brief, quiet moment, I asked the Premier for, for his advice on how best to tackle the monumental challenge in front of me. Among other advice, the Premier said something that struck a chord. Leave no stone unturned. The Scarborough campaign worked incredibly hard to ensure Scarborough knew it had a clear alternative this election. With over 10,000 doors knocked, 5,000 phone calls made and every booth staffed, we delivered the largest grassroots campaign Scarborough has ever seen by a Labor candidate. We left no stone unturned. Words will never match my gratitude to my team for their hard work throughout the campaign. To Martin Pritchard, your wisdom and counsel as my campaign director kept me grounded at times much more than I wanted to be, but certainly needed to be. <laughs> to Emma Collier, my campaign manager, your commitment, hard work and patience drove me to work harder than I ever thought possible. To Donna Leckie, your vibrance and energy lifted me up when I needed it the most. Everyone falls down occasionally, and during an eight-month-long campaign when you're working both full-time and campaigning, it definitely, definitely wasn't uncommon for me to fall down. To both of these incredible women, thank you for being there to remind me what I was fighting for and being my support. To my field team, Lucy, Ali, Ben, Ryan and Giacomo, I feel like field is often neglected as it is seen as the unglamorous side of politics for some. But it is the most important. Talking to the community on the doors and on the phones is truly the best way to not only show them who is listening, but to actually understand the mindset and the issues of the electorate. Thank you for your hard work standing alongside me and helping me reach out to my community. Thank you to all of my volunteers who stood on pre-poll, handed out on election day, letterboxed, door knocked or called. This win could not have been achieved without you. To the Telfer boys, who always had my back, even when you had to listen to me talk about politics all day like a broken record. To my surf club friends, your hard work and support gave me the energy to push further knowing I had my surf club family by my side. To my incredible family who have supported me from near and afar, I would not be standing up here without you. My whole life I've been supported by strong women, 
so I'd like to make a special mention to my mother, Christine, my sister, Reen, and my nana, Jean. When I was asked to run, the first person I spoke to was my mum. And as always, she told me to strive, because she remembered the 14-year-old boy who once came up to her to ask her why she supported Labor. And that was because Labor fights for the greater good and the fairer future for all. By standing for Labor, I could help win that fight. Mum, Rian, Nana, your support means the world to me, and I owe you everything. I love you. Thank you to the union support, especially from my own trade union, the Electrical Trade Union. Our Sparkies know how to work hard to get the job done and support each other in doing so. To Tim Picton, State Secretary, Ellie Whitaker, Assistant State Secretary, and to all of the WA Labor Party office, I'd like to thank you for your monument monumental efforts in supporting myself and the Scarborough campaign, and I'd also like to congratulate you on a job bloody well done. To my party mentors, the Honourable Clara Andrick, now a member for South Metro, you've always seen potential in me that I commonly fail to see in myself. Thank you for pushing me to meet my potential, and congratulations on your election to the Legislative Council of Western Australia. You are more than deserving. And Jan McFarlane, former federal member for Stirling, your mentorship and advice during the campaign and to this day has been invaluable. It is, no, it is no surprise to me that it will be a steep learning curve going from electrician to parliamentarian, but I have confidence knowing that I am part of this state's strongest and largest ever Labor caucus, and I have all of your support. To Team Scarborough, Lucy Morrison, Shannon Griffiths and Sophie Kerr, you have been by my side working hard throughout the campaign, and I'm extremely grateful to have you by my side as part of Team Scarborough going forward. I cannot be everywhere at once, and each of you are an extension of me, and I have complete faith that you will represent me well and take special care of the Scarborough electorate when I'm elsewhere serving the community. And last but not least, to the Premier Mark McGowan, your effort throughout the campaign whilst managing a global pandemic and the most successful government in recent history was nothing short of inspiring. Thank you for leading by example, working hard for the people of Western Australia and supporting us during the campaign. I look forward to following in your example and doing the same as the first Labor member for Scarborough in over 30 years, which makes me the first Labor member for Scarborough in my lifetime. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank you,